I know a lot of you are sick about hearing about solar. Uh, this video is going to have a lot of geeky numbers in it just to kind of discuss how it is performing and what's happening with the solar. Uh, if you're interested in adding a solar uh, setup to your bus, to your RV, I think you might want to watch it because it shows you kind of in real time what's happening and how the loads are being handled and what kind of numbers we're seeing, uh, not even on a completely sunny day. So just a warning if you don't like solar stuff. Uh, you're not going to like all the geeky information on this because there's a lot of numbers and a lot of looking at the readouts and stuff like that. It's about 12.30 right now. We're bringing in, uh, we were up to about 3,500 watts of solar just a second ago. But it's cloudy out, so it's in and out of the clouds. Um, batteries are at 91%. You can see that we're actually minus, well now we're positive. The microwave just shut off. She had the microwave going. She also right now has the induction cooktop going and the air conditioning is going. So when I first started this video, all three of those high power things were going. Um, but right now with the air conditioner and the induction cooktop going, um, we're still charging batteries. Can you turn that off for just a second? I want to see, show them what it goes up to. So the induction cooktop is off now. So we're still banking, what is that, about 1600? I can't, my glasses are fogging up here. Um, yeah, so 1600 watts that we're banking towards the batteries still. So that's the air conditioning running. Um, so we're still, you know, plenty of power and it's not even completely sunny out. So that solar power that we have is amazing. The battery bank is getting charged up. And the, in, with the two inverters, she can run so many different things at one time and it doesn't really affect our power. It's about one o'clock now and the batteries are almost completely charged. Air conditioning is still running. And you can see we're still charging the batteries really good even with the air conditioning running. The sun just went into a cloud. We're going to have some thunderstorms here in a little bit, so these are some pretty thick clouds. So here you can see the batteries are 100%. The air conditioning is running. We're pulling in 1450 watts from the solar right now. Um, it's basically breaking even on what the battery is doing. It's pulling just enough what it needs to do. So one of these, is our solar chargers is in bulk mode and the other one is actually in, uh, what is that, absorption? Um, because it, the battery is 100%. So it's only producing as much electricity from the solar. It's capable of sending more, but it's just limiting it since we're at 100%, so we're not overcharging the batteries. So whatever demands we're putting on the system, it's immediately being met. And you can actually see the demand for the air conditioning is being met all by the solar. It's not even going into the battery or out of the battery. It's just going straight from the solar to the, um, to the inverter, and the inverter is making the electricity. So it's the, the voltage is going straight from here to the inverter, which my inverter is not hooked up right now in here. But uh, you can see by what's going in and out of the battery right now, there's nothing. Uh, mine 17 watts. So uh, it's basically just keeping this at 100% and then using whatever demand we need from the solar power. So that's pretty cool that it does that. Just got another rainstorm come through. I was getting ready to go outside and start doing some work today. So we're going to probably wait a little bit for it to stop raining. Looks like we're going to have on and off rain all day today, so I might not get nearly as much accomplished as I wanted to. Here's the inverter that I just need to hook up this one wire to. I gotta pull this cover off. There's four little screws that hold it on, and then I'll take that off and plug it in. So I just have one little Ethernet cable that gets hooked up down here um, in the bay, and this will be for the um, color controller. cover back on it. That was pretty easy to do. I made sure I turned it off though so I wasn't working with a live electricity here. So the solar is starting to kick in here this morning. Um, we're charging the batteries back up pretty decently here. It's not hot enough to have the air conditioning on yet but we would be able to power that right now no problem uh, and still charge the batteries. So we're down to about 49% right now and things are charging up pretty good. So we'll see how the day goes here um, but we should you know, maybe get another 20% on the batteries before it's time to turn the air back on here, just because it's we, it, it rained a little bit this morning, uh, so it's cooler out. We don't need to run everything, so we just got the windows open and enjoying the, we've got a fan going right now, just enjoying it. 
So here our battery's up to 90%. We actually have the air conditioning running right now. So you can see the solar's bringing in about 2,600, 2,900, 3,000. Yeah, so it's going in and out of some clouds right now. But there's 1,500 watts, 1,600 watts still going to the batteries on top of what's being used for the air conditioning, which is about 1,300. And 20 watts for the air conditioning and that also includes some fans we have on inside and uh, maybe the refrigerator and a couple other things might be on there too but plenty of excess power to be able to run the air and it's not even again it's not full sun out there it's cloudy it had been raining just two minutes ago it was raining I just got some overcast skies here and the you can just see how it is where the sun's kind of coming through brighter and then it gets a little darker and a little brighter and the solar does real well with that though. I'm gonna go out and set up a bunch of trail cams uh, on the property here and just see what's happening on the property, animals, people, stuff like that. I think I did a pretty good job disguising that in the tree there. All right, that's pretty camouflaged I think. I just came out here to work on the brakes. I was gonna actually just adjust them to begin with and see how much they got, how better they would get. But uh, I see it's got a broken brake cable there, do you see? Let's see if I can zoom in on this. But it's all broken. So luckily they sent me a new one, so I'll be able to replace that. I've got the parts, so now I know why they're not working very well. But uh, I'll still go ahead and take take off the drums and inspect them and see what kind of condition that the brakes are in. They sent me new pads too, but if they don't need to replace, just replace the cable and adjust them, we should be good to go. But um, yeah, that's at least I know now what the problem was. I'm also tightening this pedal linkage here. There was like uh, two thirds of the movement of the pedal before it even uh, started moving, pulling the brakes. So I'm just gonna tighten that up a little bit. Gotta loosen the jam nut, go from there. It's up on a block. <laughs> okay, it actually stops on the hill now. The wheels lock up. <laughs> We used to not be able to do that at all. So the previous issue with the brakes was, well, A, the pedal went all the way to the floor, but I didn't really realize that. I just that's how, that thought that's how it was on this golf cart. Um, but after adjusting them now, it does start braking long before it hits the bottom of the pedal. Um, it's very, very sensitive now. So that was just an adjustment in the cables there. And then with the one broken cable, a lot of the twist sideways and there wasn't tension on it like it should have been. Um, Number two issue was going down the big hill, we could never, if you rode the brake really hard and never picked up any speed, you could stop on the hill. But if at any point you got fat going faster than say like, I don't know, four or five miles an hour maybe, um, you could never stop then. You could put the pedal all the way to the floor and it would slow it down a little bit, make it controllable, but it would never stop. So once it had a little mass and momentum, it wouldn't do it. So now that we've got the brakes adjusted, it is working correctly. Kelly's got her first eggplant.